the, uh, my dream was always to compete uh, IFBB. But I know it was really hard for me since I was an American citizen. I was not familiar with the U.S. and especially because I knew that the best guys coming out there out of America. So, um, but I knew what I had to do is there's only two ways. I said either you go to the World Championship, you know, the Amateur Universe IFBB to get your pro card, or you got to compete in the U.S. and win the national show, which is probably even harder. But I figured this, let's just just do it like this. Let's just go over. And you know, and see for yourself what it's like. So I just bought myself a ticket. I remember that it was '97, I think second of July '97. I went over to the U.S. All I knew was Gold's Gym, Venice, and Marina Pacific. That's all I knew. And I know Gold's was in Mecca, and Marina Pacific is where everybody stayed when they're there. So I just bought myself a ticket. And I got to the airport. I took, I grabbed a taxi, and I just said Marina Pacific. Because I remember everybody kept saying that the Marina Pacific is just around the corner. I also remember uh, everybody talking about the place called the Firehouse, which is the restaurant where everybody eats. And I was so excited to go there and just to see what it, you know what it's all about. Then uh, I, I walked uh, and I was looking for Gold's Gym. And I felt kind of stupid. I didn't want to ask nobody where Gold's Gym is at because everybody said it's just around the corner. So I kept walking and walking and walking around the blocks looking for Gold's Gym. So when I finally got to Gold's Gym, and uh, I said, this is it, this is, this is where everybody's training. You know, I said, this is where you're going to see all the big guys. So I walked into Gold's, I'll never forget that. And I felt so little, you know, because I was just like, you know, didn't nobody know who I was, you know. And I walked into Gold's, and uh, I was just looking around, and I was just, I was like stunned, you know. Because just, just, just the size was just, like, it's just crazy. And... Uh, I just, you know, and I even, I think I paid uh, uh, for daily membership and I trained. No, actually I paid for two weeks because I was supposed to stay two weeks. So, and I just wanted to train. So I trained and the first guy I talked to in, in goals in Venice was uh, Rico, Rico McClinton, and, uh, which I think is a nice guy, you know, because he came up to me and we, you know, we, we started talking and he asked me, uh, do I compete? I said, no, but I want to compete, you know, I'd like to compete. He said, um, and he kind of hooked me up with uh, John Lindsay's phone number. So I called John Lindsay, I remember, and uh, I told John Lindsay who I was and that I'm living in Thailand. He was like, Thailand? He probably never had nobody calling him and said, yeah, I live in Thailand. Could you send me like, like NPC application form so I can fill out my application? But he really did it and I told him that I would, I would like to compete. So he told me that, well, you know, what? What would be the best thing for me to do is to do, uh, of course, the border states, because he is a promoter of the border states, and the border states were the last uh, national qualified before the nationals that year. So he sent me, he did send me the applications to Thailand. I filled everything out and, uh, and I prepared for the uh, border states classics, and I knew that I had to uh, win the overall in order to uh, qualify for the nationals. Backstage, for the weigh-in, everybody had, everybody had to take his clothes off to step on scale. And from that, that minute where I took my clothes off, everybody kept looking at me like, who's this? <laughs> and, even, and even John Lindsay had this kind of, because he knew already, oh, this is something, you know, and this is his border state. So I won the overall. And uh, the, after the show, we found out that, um, that this was the, the national qualifier for the next year's nationals, which would be in 98. But Ted Williams and uh, John Lindsay, they kind of helped me out and they just pushed me into the Nationals for, uh, in 97, which was three weeks later in Dallas, Texas. And uh, so I bought myself a ticket to Dallas. The event hotel was already booked, fully booked, so I didn't know where to go. So I found, me, I found myself a hotel in Dallas. I was all by myself. And... Uh, yeah, and actually I finished fourth at the Nationals. That was the year when Tom Prince won the overall, Albert Burke was second, and Gary Downing third. And I placed fourth behind uh, these three guys, and that was for me, like, winning the show. It was the first national show. Nobody knew who I was. I was a no-name, and I uh, placed fourth in my first national show. Then, after that, Lonnie Tipper uh, t uh, talked to me after the show. 
doctor, you got a great future, you should just keep going. And I said, yeah, because I was really, really motivated after the show. I said, yeah, I'm going to prepare for next year's, next year's uh, nationals. Because I knew the nationals would be the easier show because every class winner gets his pro card. And I knew the USA is the hardest show because it's just overall. But Lonnie said, nah, don't wait till the nationals, you know, you go ahead and do the, uh, do the uh, uh, USA. So I waited, actually I waited 2.16 at the Nationals. So I went back and I figured, okay, go ahead and do the USA. You know, why not, if you do it, do it right. Why wait to the Nationals? So I came back seven months later, I did the USA. And this is the hardest show, you know, and I, al I always said to myself, this is just where they already have their favorites, you know? And since you're not living in America, it's gonna be even harder for you to, uh, uh, to win in, uh, like the Miss USA. But I said, yeah, I said, you know, this is always what I said, you don't have to be scared of nobody. All you gotta do is just be the best you can be because if you win this show, that makes you even even more interested because they figured, because I know what they thought, that how can somebody win a national show living like so far, being from being so far away from the center of the sport? And uh, for me, I mean, even like everybody said, it was a tie, I won the show because I was in no name. I mean, I can't take nothing away from Melvin. Melvin is my friend. Ever since the USA, we we tight friends, and he know I love him. But I figured I was the no-name. He was a favorite. If I beat him, that means I won. That tiebreaker this, tiebreaker that. I mean, I would, even if they say Melvin Anthony would win the show, I would say the same thing. He deserved it, because he looked good. But for me, it was just, I mean, I felt better than, uh, then uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, you can you can win a million dollars in the lottery. I think it's not the feeling winning the USA. That was probably even better than winning the lottery. You know, so I was just too happy to win the show. Three, four, come on, come on, uh, five, easy, easy, uh, six. This is getting easier. Come on, uh, Sim fan, come on. This is easy, easy, uh, five. Uh, five. Two there, there's two, come on, oh. there's two. That's one, now there's oh. another one. Don't you give up, don't you give up. Come on! Oh. Good stuff. Good stuff.
Yeah. 